Hi there, everybody. I just like to preface this analysis with a little uh, warning slash explanation for why it doesn't look the way it should. Um, if you pay attention to anything else on my channel other than the analysis, and some of you very well might just only watch one type of thing I do, and that's perfectly fine. But if you've seen any of my vlogs, you'll notice that I am I was in kind of a tight spot and I had to leave home and I had to go to a different place. And I'm currently squatting at a friend's place, kind of, until I can get, you know, a real job and get my own apartment. Uh, but that, unfortunately, has meant that I haven't been able to get my main computer that I do most of my editing put back together. So I'm kind of editing stuff slapdash on my laptop, which isn't very powerful to the point where it has issues running my editing software of choice and I don't really have the luxury of going out and getting one that is more efficient and works better on lower power laptops. So I kind of have to do this audio only. So if you want if you want to just you know, keep listening to hear my thoughts on the episode, I've tried to make this as like I've had the script for this is like very like non-visual. It's incredibly like everything is just doesn't need visuals to really sum it up, but yeah, so if you want to tab out, you just, you know, tab out and go do a video game or, like, pretend this is a podcast or something, which some of you very well might already do. I don't know, I know that's how I watch analysis. Anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoy this analysis anyway. I'm getting back in the groove, and I'm going to be doing this every week again. Hopefully, this is this is only a situation for another week before I can get my computer set up and all together. Uh, at the most, it's gonna last maybe another week. Maybe. Anyway, everybody, enjoy the enjoy the analysis, and I will. I keep calling these reviews. They're not reviews. They're analysis. Enjoy the analysis, everyone, and I will see you on the other side. And so begins another season of Horsey Horse Time. Acquaintances are mystical. And so begins what's probably a full season of me talking about it instead of just starting halfway through. I will get to the rest of season 4 sometime in the next century. This season's opener was... interesting, to say the least. Unfortunately, I gotta say that I may have ruined it a little for myself when I watched the storyboard and preview stuff way back when. Which is a reason I normally go into these episodes blind. Cutie Markless, compared to the other season openers, didn't strike the same chord with me that Return of Harmony or Princess Twilight Sparkle did, but I enjoyed it all the same. This episode presents a strange, bizarro scenario in that it explores what a pony is without the cutie mark. The answer? Absolutely nothing. This facet of the story is probably my favorite part of the episode, even though it probably could have been explored a lot more. After all, a pony's cutie mark denotes what they're good at, and arguably is a representation of them having that talent in the first place. Oh, did I say arguably? I meant totally is. Without cutie marks, the ponies in the episode aren't much better off than the ponies under Tyrek, which is a little disappointing, since we had that sort of problem in the season 4 finale already, but I suppose it's a different enough context to be forgivable. Now that I think about it, cutie marks have gotten a lot of play in both this episode and the season 4 finale. Perhaps it's a lead-in to the theme of the season? The big friendship map in the Hall of Friendship playset isn't too much of a theme setter, unless the theme is indeed go to places, find disharmony, and stamp it out with an iron hoof. That feels like it could get pretty old far too quickly to make for an entertaining season. From Rainbow Powers taking on cutie mark themes, to T-Rex stealing cutie marks, to Crazy Mare stealing people's cutie marks, to the Hall of Friendship being powered by cutie marks, it's entirely mark heavy. Hell, maybe the CMC will get their cutie marks before the end of the season. It'd be thematically appropriate, at least. Even the antagonist's evil plan to steal cutie marks, ironically enough, is powered by cutie marks. Her special talent, much like Twilight, appears to be magic, but specifically a spell that lets her steal cutie marks. Can we get Exhibit in here? Because this feels like a yo dog moment. Speaking of the Mayor of the Hour, Starlight Glimmer feels a bit... wasted. Her name isn't even all that memorable, for one. It's just another Twilight Sparkle Sunset Shimmer Daylight Darkle format name that can really only be used once to draw parallels to Princess Protagonist before it gets a little old. She's nowhere near as memorable a villain as Nightmare Moon or Discord or Nightmare Moon and Discord, even though she should be. 
a pseudo-hippie commune out in the middle of nowhere based on creepy equality and cult-like devotion to a leader that, in the grand scheme of things, isn't so much powerful as she is manipulative? That should have made for a good villain! Going into it, I expected her to slowly start winning the main six over, twisting them against each other as she got into their heads, before the magic of friendship or whatever saved the day. Instead, the town goes full on, yeah, shit's totally wrong here, as soon as they enter the town with a musical number that just sounds eerie and wrong, even when you listen to the lyrics. Not even looking into them, just hearing them for the first time. It really saddens me when a concept is wasted like this. The only pony that ever says anything along the lines of, hey, these guys are just different, maybe they're not so bad, is Fluttershy. But Fluttershy will say that about anybody, whether she actually thinks it, or she's just being nice. What I would have liked probably sounds a bit similar to the discording in Season 2 opener, but damn it if I don't want to see the main six's friendship tested by internal squabbles started by a third party again. To get all these ponies to follow her every whim at the first place, Starlight should be manipulative, cunning, and able to give off an air of normality and right that any good cult leader should have. I want Applejack, Pinky, and Fluttershy drinking some of the Kool-Aid and drifting towards Starlight's point of view, at least until Solid proved that she's a villain came up. She could have been so much more, a unicorn that can steal cutie marks and is just above unicorn twilight levels of power. That's just begging for something cool. Add in that at some point, I'm fairly certain she was supposed to be an alicorn. I've seen merch of her from before the season started, and it has her walking around with a set of wings. I actually expected that to be revealed at some point, that she was using magic to hide her wings or something. But alas, it never happened. Maybe I just spoiled myself by letting my brain write an episode from what I saw of storyboards and toys. But whatever, I still call it a missed opportunity. One thing I really like about this episode, though, the background ponies got quite a bit of play towards the end. I really felt like the main six weren't massive superheroes that had to come in and save the day from an evil, while poor Whittle townsfolk couldn't handle it. The episode even had its own background main four, which I thought was pretty cute. Even if I can't seem to remember the Pegasus Mare's name, Sugar Bell, Double Diamond, Party Favor, and Blue Mare McWhite Mane are all so cute together, and I really hope they show up again. Don't make me use this pen for shitty fanfiction, Hasbro, I swear to god. Seeing the main six humbled and brought down to level with the rest of Equinity was really nice to see, and when the whole town banded together to bring Starlight to justice and get the main six their cutie marks back, it was actually quite touching. Most dismissed the background ponies as side jokes or just props for the scene, to the point of pacing the same pony up to seven times in the same shot. Seeing these new pony models and how well they are handled here makes me hopeful for episode 100, where it'll be the background pony Palooza. And we're totally going to see an episode based on Lyra, Bon Bon, Vinyl, and Octavia going on a double date. Or not. There were so many cool little things in this episode, like how apparently Applejack's talent is partially tied into how southern she is, and how she can't make countryisms, and that's a quote by the way, without her cutie mark. Rainbow Dash can't fly faster than most ponies can walk, and Pinkie Pie being forcibly restrained and unable to make anything fun. And the second she does, she immediately goes to Maud Pie levels. It was a lot of fun to see, and while they were the most extreme, and for some reason they seem to be affected far more than Twilight, Fluttershy, or Rarity were. Well, Rarity couldn't tell if something was pretty or not, which really isn't that big of a thing, because Rarity stuff is gaudy to start with. But it was just really nice to see how tightly their cutie marks tied into their being, even though I really wish it could have been explored a bit more. Anyway, everybody, as always, I am Nozovix. If you tell me what you think about this episode, did you like? Do you think it's a good portend for the future of the season? I don't know. I I know I didn't talk about the episode that much in this review, in this analysis, but I'm trying to move away from just recapping the episodes. Uh, if you guys want me to keep recapping the episode, let me down in the, in the comments. It's a new season. I'm starting from episode one this time, and I really want to change it up and make the this the best I can and say the most stuff I can say without, you know, wasting time. So, you know, just leave some of the stuff down in the comments. Tell me what you thought about this episode, yeah, and how you think Season 5 is going to go, your predictions, stuff like that. Will we see Starlight again? I really hope so, because she's right now she's hiding in a cave like some sort of pony Osama Bin Laden. And all that, remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and I will see you 
next week for the next episode.